Hello, everybody. Welcome to everybody inside the Zoom room and welcome to everybody who's watching on Facebook. Um, please, please, please give us a share. Don't be afraid if you're watching us on Facebook to give us some like emojis and heart emojis. Let's get the algorithms going, guys. That's how sexy people work nowadays. Um, and also get involved on the chat. And um, if one of us can remember, we'll try and read them out. <laughs> but my name is Lucy Orchard and I am your host tonight. Um, I'd like to say it's because I'm the best host in the world. I'm just, people bring me on their gigs to make their gigs international. I am based in the UK. Um, and um, I'm excited to be part of the Quarantine Comedy Show, volume 21. Um, I'm, uh, I just want to perform like the great female comedians that have come before me. So I want to practice, practice, practice. I want to be like Joan Rivers or Tiffany Haddish or my personal heroine, RuPaul. Well, you've got a set of bollocks on you to try and do comedy on a Zoom camera in the middle of a global <laughs> pandemic. <laughs> um, I never knew if I'd actually have the confidence to do stand-up. So I asked my uh, ex-boyfriend and he said, Lucy, darling, you've got this in the bag. He said, for one thing, you look funny. <laughs> he said, you sound funny. And he said recently that I've tasted funny rude <laughs> but that's not actually how I support myself just through comedy um I, you probably all guessed it but I'm also a truck driver um I used to be a long distance intercontinental tramper but now I'm just a local dumper truck <laughs> driver um I didn't plan to be a truck driver my ex steered me into it <laughs> um if we only dated uh, for around about a year um, if you don't like truck puns, you really Sweet. should buckle in now. <laughs> I love a pun. Um, it was never going to last for, for three reasons. One, it was long distance. Two, he drove me crazy. And three, he was a fucking narcissist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, not a truck pun. In fact, it wasn't fucking funny at all. Um, I don't know what it is. I feel I'm sorry if I'm a bit sweary tonight. When it's it's one o'clock in the morning for me, so the, the filter's off. Um, now you may have noticed that I said ex-boyfriend because being a female truck driver, people automatically assume you're a lesbian. Well, we weren't to start with <laughs> doing the job I do. I get to witness the full spectrum of mankind. We've got the men who won't talk to women, the men who can't talk to women. And the men that are not legally allowed to talk to women anymore. Um, <laughs> it's amazing. I'm 39 um, and I've actually got a superpower. So like Spider-Man had to get like um, Spider-Man like, bitten with by a spider and then he could shoot out a web. Um, that um, Captain America, he had to go part through a medical trial just to just to become super strength. Um, I turned 39 and I could see through men's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have to be honest, uh, being a women driver, I thought that I was going to be inundated with offers of romance because there's not many of us. I thought, you know, come on, look at the ratios. To be honest, I thought I'd be elbow deep in dick by now. <laughs> but the last men near my truck were there to steal my diesel and I let them. Don't judge me, I'm lonely and I really like the attention. Um, in case you've never had your fuel nicked, a man turns up in the middle of the night, sticks his hose in, and once he feels satisfied, he leaves you feeling empty. It's not that alien to com comprehend. Oh, I, I remember it fondly. It happened on a lay-by just off the A43. <laughs> Very popular road down here. Um, in fact, the family planning nurse asked me what I used for contraception, and I explained easy, my sparkling wit, and an emasculating occupation. I literally can't get pregnant. Um, and I'd also like to take a second to dispel the myth that uh, truck drivers just sit in their cabs all day watching porn. I'm masturbating. I don't watch porn. I'm a lady. Got imagination. I'm not wasting the data. <laughs> um, in 2019, I was actually voted uh, best female truck driver in the events industry. There's no punchline. I'm just really smug. 
<laughs> being, being on Zoom, you can actually become a prop comic. You can just drag things <laughs> up on the <Yeah>. line. <laughs> if this was a real gig, I would not be able to drag a load of stuff on stage. <laughs> with me. Um, I'm in fact, I'm the undisputed winner. The fact that there was no reward ceremony in 2020 is just fucking semantics. <laughs> Two times a winner, baby. <laughs> so I asked our amazing lineup to tell me a fact about themselves. So turns out Alani is uh, very intolerant to peanut butter, like really intolerant. And we're not talking anaphylactic shock. Uh, she just really hates the taste and the texture. Um, and Juliana told me that uh, they are actually someone's pet cat and they have a meow master. Now this sounds adorable, except I heard for their last five gigs, they were paid two kilos of kibbles, cheeky ounce of catnip and three scrubbed up till receipts. Juliana, do not take payment unless it's in cash. And then Ashley told me that she's actually the international four leaf clover finding champion. Well, here's a challenge. Find the dreams and hopes I lost in 2020. <laughs> <laughs> now i'm gonna wrap this up so don't worry about me yes i did say i toast funny but i went through all the uh, all the the track and trace apps and all the symptoms i haven't got the virus it was just a nasty case of yeast infection oh. um and um i will be doing a bit of a chat with everybody after the show um so dm me if you want the address of that lay by to get your fuel nicked i've been there five times um, so let's get on with our show. Now, this first act is exhausting. She exhausts me. Um, so Juliana, when they decided lockdown was, was happening, they did a challenge every day. How many comedy gigs can I do? What can I achieve? I don't even want to guess how many thousands of gigs this, this person has done over the last pandemic. I mean, I was like, oh yeah, I've done five this week. And they were like, I've done five today. <laughs> <laughs> they are one of my favorite people in the entire world. So coming from all the way over there, through your screens, Put your hands together, please, for the one, the only, Juliana Heng. Meow. Meow. <laughs> Thanks, Lucy. Hi, everyone. I'm Juliana Heng from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Anyone been to Kuala Lumpur before? No. Great. You did not miss much. <laughs> we, are, we are just the Asian version of Detroit. Oh. Oh. I have autism. Autism happens when one part of the brain grows faster than others. For me, it's my forehead. <laughs> <laughs> well, Less of a forehead, more of a five head. <laughs> when I was five years old, I have not started speaking. My mom brought me to see a doctor. The doctor said, Mrs. Heng, your daughter is like a proton car. The power window to her brain does not work. If you are wondering what a proton car is, it is Malaysia's national car that we are still learning to be proud of. Huh? It's been 30 years. The power window still doesn't work. We purposely made it that way so that Singaporeans won't claim it. By the way, this joke kills in Singapore. <laughs> because of my power window problem, I'm a bit slow. When you all listen to jokes, you will laugh immediately. I will laugh a bit later. <laughs> Tomorrow. <coughs> For those who aren't laughing right now, don't worry. You are just like me. <laughs> this reminds me of your former president, Donald Trump. Every time a daily news reporter asked him a question, he only tweeted back a reply at 3 a.m. By the way, 
this twerp is still saying that the COVID-19 is the Chinese bad flu. I may be Chinese, but don't worry. You won't get the COVID-19 from me through Facebook Live and Zoom. <laughs> But because I'm autistic, you will get it tomorrow. <laughs> Speaking about laughter, according to laughteronlineuniversity.com, there are 15 types of laughter ranging from the softest to the loudest. As an autistic, I can only pick up three types of laughter. The first one goes like this. Ha 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 ha. That's the real laughter. The second one goes like this. <laughs> it's the polite laughter, which means you suck. <laughs> and I pity you. <laughs> and the third type of laughter goes like this. It's the laughter of Singaporeans. <laughs> No Singaporeans are injured in the making of this joke. We hope. <laughs> I'm 30 years old this year and still single. There's no joke in this. I just want to tell you I'm still available. Dating is hard for someone like me because I cannot read emotions, social cues, and flirting signals. Sometimes I don't even know when someone wants to kiss me until I feel their tongue. <laughs> <laughs> My love life has been a mess. I've been on six first dates this year and all of them ended the same way. They tried to sell me something. <laughs> Insurance, travel membership, and a human liver. <laughs> I bought the liver. You will never know when you need one. I've decided to use an autistic dating app. Many of the people there looks very strange and bizarre. And all I need to do is to swipe up on someone I like. Yes, it's called Pokemon Go. <gasps> As someone who is literal, I find dating app names very complicated. For example, Tinder. I thought there is an app for smokers to look for their lighters. Grinder, I thought there is an app for guys to look for their power tools to screw each other. <laughs> <laughs> and Coffee Mix Bagel, I actually thought that is a new food delivery app. When the guy comes, he has no food. He is the bagel. <laughs> We don't have such problems in the autistic dating world. We have an autistic dating site. It has a brilliant name. It's called autisticdating.com because we don't fuck around when we want to fuck around. <laughs> <laughs> I tried dating someone on the spectrum. It didn't work out. Do you know what happens when two autistic people come together? No. Nothing. <laughs> it's just like putting two pandas together. We think the same. We act the same. And we play Pokemon Go. <laughs> Separately. Because we are the experts of social distancing. We have been doing this long before COVID days. At the end of the day, I decided to date someone neurotypical because that way, I always get to be special. <laughs> People can be unkind at times. I once had a boss who told me, Juliana, you don't look autistic. And I told him, what a coincidence. You don't look like a boss. <laughs> People also tell me, Juliana, you have autism. Does that mean that you have commitment issues and you are unable to hold down a full-time job? That's not true. My commitment issues and my job issues have nothing to do with my autism. <laughs> I'm just a shitty person. <laughs> I was an accountant. 
I quit. I hated it. It's so boring. Yes, I'm an Asian autistic person who hates maths. <laughs> my boss told me my communication skills need work. So he sent me to a workshop. And I learned that if you want people to listen to you, start a sentence with congratulations. <laughs> so I put that into practice immediately. Congratulations. You have all the time you want in the world. You are fired. <laughs> Congratulations. You don't need to pay rent anymore. You are homeless. <laughs> Congratulations. You can stay in bed as much as you want. You have COVID. People say that vaccine causes autism. But thanks to COVID-19, people are actually demanding for a vaccine. There is a conspiracy theory, theory that states researchers have already found the vaccine for COVID-19. Just that it's still not working well because uh, researchers are still finding out how this vaccine can cause autism. Since when autistic people become so in demand? And yes, I've volunteered to be part of their pilot testing. And today I can say I am super autistic. <laughs> I'm so autistic that now I'm off the spectrum. <laughs> People told me, Juliana, you have autism. You cannot drive. That's not true. I'm a very conservative driver. My maximum speed limit is only 50 miles per hour on the oncoming lane. <laughs> Even better, I'm actually an Uber driver back home in Asian Detroit. Don't worry. The power window to my car works. <laughs> Uber sent a message to my passengers informing them that I'm disabled. I appreciate them for doing that, but there's a problem. They did not state what kind of disability I have. Because of that, every time I drive up to my passengers, they will cancel on me when they see me in sunglasses. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm Juliana Heng. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you kill me every time. Juliana, you're amazing. <laughs> I've just made a few notes there. Like Trump, yeah, he does. He tweets at 3 a.m. Do you think he's just like me where he hits a bottle of rose and thinks he's the funniest fucker alive? <laughs> <laughs> I can just about make out what I'm tweeting and I'm like, this joke is going to rock the world. I'm going to go viral and I wake up and no, not even my cats thought it was funny. Um, I'm so glad to hear your Pokemon Go. Please, will you um, send me your trainer code? <laughs> I'll try not to. <laughs> I, uh, I actually... Um, I, I really enjoy playing Pokemon and you have to do a lot of walking to earn points. And during lockdown, uh, I got sent a little message that said, congratulations, you have walked two kilometers this week. <laughs> you judgy little bastard. It's called lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> Going from my bed to the kitchen, to the sofa, to the kitchen, to my bed. You know, I actually, I was proud I'd done two kilometers. <laughs> um, and dating apps, I'm 39. I've never had a dating app. In my day, you just get really drunk, go home with somebody, wake up and stay in a loveless relationship for three years because both of you are too lazy to end it. <laughs> I didn't know that there was a new way of doing it. <laughs> I have never heard of anything called coffee and bagel. I think you're lying and I'm going to look it up immediately because <laughs> I, I prefer food. I, if it was a food delivery app, I'd be there right away. But thank you, but no, thank you for relationships. <laughs> um, our next act coming up is Alani Cooper and she has uh, two shows. She's got Witty Wednesdays and she's got Women Behind Glass, which I know that my friend Trish Sullivan recently did. Um, and I was so amazed. I had a quick look on the Facebook because that's what you do. And it turns out she's actually a Wonder Woman because she said she's a DC comic. Oh. <laughs> I'm so proud of that one. <laughs> <laughs> so 
Well, everyone sit up because she's so beautiful and she looks so presented. Come on, everyone look a bit straighter. And if you want to unmute yourselves because you have a quiet background and you would like to be laugh heard laughing, please feel free to. I don't think that's against the rules. So please put your hands together for the one, the only, Alani Cooper. Yeah. Hey guys, thanks so much for coming to the show this evening. It's so good to have you. Um, and thank you so much for the lovely introduction, Lucy. That was great. Um, I am a DC comic, and I will tell you guys, uh, things in DC, they were wild last month. I don't know if you guys saw the news when a bunch of rednecks tried to take over the country on January 6th. I was really upset about it. Um, and the main reason why is because it was my birthday. Like, literally, it was actually my birthday. Like, January 6th was when I turned 25 this year. And all I can remember is I was sitting with my best friend and we were eating chicken empanadas and like we were sitting outside of a DC restaurant, like far away from the drama, but all you could hear was like police sirens. I was like, you know, a coup would happen on my birthday. And she was like, honestly, yeah, this is very on brand for you. It's very, very chaotic, very, very awful. Like this is very you. And I was like, thank you. This is why we're friends because you're very reassuring. <laughs> You know, she never, never once said happy birthday, never was like, oh, no, Alani, it's okay. Like six months from now, we'll, re we'll redo your birthday. She was just like, yeah, this would happen to you. You have the worst luck that I've ever seen in any human being ever. So thank you. <laughs> it's good to have friends that keep you honest, you know. Um, I try to be the honest friend, but my friends, they, they beat me to it every time uh for instance one time i was telling them you know i was like gosh this guy that i'm seeing he's really weird and they were like every man you've ever dated is weird this is not new like the men that you attract are weird because you're weird alani have you met you you're weird and i'm like okay well thanks a lot are you guys saying that i can't attract just like a normal man who works like a nine to five and isn't into weird things like feet and like I don't know being mean to me and they're like no <laughs> we don't think that you're capable of attracting that kind of man because we've met you like you quote Monsters Inc at work meetings you're yeah. not going to you're not going to attract high quality men you're just not all right so and I always just have to sit there because like they're right I do quote Monsters Inc at work meetings you know what I'm like okay so like Sometimes certain people will suggest projects at work that just like feel like it's not going to work, you know? So I, I try to be really nice about it, but like they'll finish their presentation and be like, so what do you guys think? And I immediately switched to my Mike Wachowski voice. I'm like, it's a work in progress. It's a work in progress. I'm working on it. Just you, keep doing you. Mm. My boss is always like, what the fuck? It was bad, Jeremy. It's not a work in progress. It was just bad. Don't even, don't even listen to Alani. Why would you say it's a work in progress? It was a bad idea. And I'm like, I'm trying to be encouraging. Long story short, you guys should watch Monsters, Inc. Um, Mike Wasowski is my favorite mic in the whole wide world. Possibly the only mic that matters. Fuck the rest of the mics. I am so serious. I hate Michaels. I don't know what happened in the years between like 1978 to like 1990 but everybody decided to to name their male white child michael so now here in dc we just have like this this crop of like middle-aged white men just being weird of course they're always hitting on me right because i I've, I've talked to at least 10 mics since moving to dc and they're all weird like one of them had a pregnancy fetish and he wanted to immediately start a family with me after only two dates and I knew something was wrong with him because I was like, why would anybody want to start a family with me? I quote Monsters, Inc. at work meetings. Also, I have terrible mommy issues. Like, no. Um, another Mike told me that he was in love with his second cousin. Oh. But he was no longer in love with her because he felt like he was in love with me because he thought I was pretty. I didn't know what to do with that one. I really didn't. I didn't know if I should feel bad for, like, the cousin or for me or for both of us, or for him. I don't know. Just do me a favor, you guys. Stop naming your children Mike. 
just stop doing that. We don't need to do that anymore. There are enough Michaels on this planet Earth for us to be okay. Honestly, I feel like if they just phase out entirely, that's fine. Let's replace them with like, I don't know, Leroy's or something. You know, I have never really met that many Leroy's and the ones that I have are dying. And like, that's like my ideal man. If he's not gonna be nice to me, if he's dying, that's better. <laughs> Cause at least then he's quiet. I love quiet men. They're the best. Like you can ask them, what do you think of my outfit? No thoughts. Where should we go out to eat? No thoughts. You get to pick everything because they have no thoughts and no say in anything. They're just quiet. They just look at you. And I feel like besides dying men, the closest I have been able to accomplish with quiet men is nerds. I, okay. So like back in quarantine last year, when things were pretty rough, I got added to all these weird Facebook groups. And one of them was called how to keep a man as a single woman. And I was like, well, that's insulting. I didn't even tell anybody I was single, but I guess I'm here, whatever. So one of the girls was saying like the best categories of loyal men to date. Right. And she like, she was like men in their late thirties, men who like lost a limb, uh, men in prison. And that last one really got me. I was like, no, they're not loyal to you in prison. They have boyfriends there, which is totally fine. I get it. You need a buddy system in prison. Important. But like, girl, no. I was like, if you want a loyal man, just date somebody who has two computer monitors, a light up keyboard and a game chair and two games. <laughs> they're not going anywhere. Okay. I'm like so grateful to even like attract a woman. They're not going to leave you. You know, you could take their credit card and be like, okay, hon, I'm just going to like spend a couple thousand dollars. I'll be right back. They don't care. They're too busy playing Redhead Redemption 2 or whatever. They don't, they don't care. They're like, okay, babe, have fun. I really hope I can beat this next level, but I don't know. It's really hard. And you're like, I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is. They have no opinions, no thoughts. They just love you. And they're quiet because they're playing their video game. Everybody wins everybody wins. Um, switching gears real fast. So I don't know about the rest of you guys, but has anybody here seen Chicken Run? Does anybody yeah. know what that is? Okay. Okay. Yeah. So Lucy knows. Lucy knows. The what now? Chicken Run. It's a movie. Yeah. Oh, Chicken Run, the movie. Yeah. Oh, it's a great movie. <laughs> oh boy. Oh no. Okay. So I'm glad you agreed. That is actually my mom's favorite film oh. in the entire world. And you know what? I blame almost all of my mental illnesses on that film because she would just watch it every Thursday at 8 p.m. Central Time. She would pop in the video and be like, okay, girls, chicken run time, gather around, make the popcorn. And I was like, why is she so obsessed with this film? Like, looking back on it, what an insane concept. Like, they had a board of people sit around and they were like, you know what? You know what the kids are going to love? a movie about chickens trying to escape. Never mind that the main thing that children ate when that movie came out, oh, God. chicken nuggets. Oh, God. Like, I have to blame that on why half of my friends are vegan. Because like we were sitting there in this theater watching Ginger, you know, furiously plot how she was gonna get out of this, this fucking coup, you know, or coop, chicken, whatever, wherever they put chickens. Seriously funny how to get out of it. And a man, Rocky the Rooster, almost got in her way. That's part of the reason why I'm also a feminist because, you know, don't trust men. They will slow you down. They will hold you back when the plane is like lifting off with you and your chicken sisters. But like, it's such an insane movie. Like, it's literally like, oh gosh. And I don't want to pull, I don't want to like be like too controversial here, but it's like, it's literally roots for children. Because it's a bunch of it's a bunch of slaves trying to escape the plantation, essentially. You know, because they know if they rise up, they're gonna die. They're gonna like get, they're gonna die. They're gonna end up in a pie. <laughs> I'm like, that's not their goal. You know, their goal is to like live fulfilling lives on their own chickeny terms. You know, they could have just slapped the name Roots for Children on that on that movie. But because it was like a British movie, they're not gonna do that. Because like British people like let black people be free first. Here in America, they were like, well, we'll think about it. But it did wonders, it did wonders here in the US. And my mom, that's, I don't know why that's Cheryl's favorite movie. Like she can't even tell you. If you ask her, she just goes, well, I just really, I just, I really relate to Ginger. 
because she's so resilient and I'm resilient because I had two children and I didn't kill either of them. And as a child, <laughs> well, I didn't ask to be here either, lady. Like it took a lot for me not to take you out too. I mean, I, I was homeschooled, you guys. So I spent a lot of time with my family. Um, I think that's why I empathize so much with people who had to like do the whole e-learning thing with their kids during the pandemic and they're not used to it. It's not fun. We should not have to hang out with our family all the time. It's not how it's supposed to work. Okay. That's how murder charges get brought up. That's how people go missing because you with your family <laughs> all day. I, you, like, love your family for sure. But you know what? Both my parents are black Republicans. It's too much, it's too much. It was too much drama. It was too much chicken run. Too much. Hopefully that my set wasn't too much for you guys. I'm going to cap it here. Thanks so much for having me button down comedy. And thank you, Lucy, for hosting. And you guys enjoy the rest of your night. Maybe go watch Chicken Run. I don't know. Live your best life. Bye. Bye. Oh, wow. That was brilliant. I have to say, I had, I had, a, I had a little favorite moment in that set. And when you said about the guy with the pregnancy fetish, oh, God. I've got it on gallery view. And Ashley, in my face, we both kind of went, oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you said about how F Facebook put you this groups about how to keep a man. I was watching a comedy film, um, comedy clip of something on YouTube, and I just wandered off at the end and I didn't realize about this autoplay and it took me down an absolute rabbit hole of Facebook vi uh, YouTube videos by men for women on how to treat men better how to keep men I mean I love a bit of mansplaining but Christ an hour of a man telling you how you can treat your man better I was like who watches this shit mm -hmm. eight million views eight million <laughs> views like that can't all have just been autoplay where people went to make a cup of tea afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> uh, chicken run um, is amazing. I am British. I, I live in a little village and we actually have chickens and they have the most amazing creatures. They've got such personalities. And we had um, two chickens. Uh, they were sisters from the same, you know, um, from the, from the same flock <laughs> batch. And um, the thing is they don't really understand familial rules and um i'd sort of see oscar go up to mount his sister and i would run over going get off your sister you're not supposed to do that and i'd forget that people could walk past the garden and not see who i was shouting <laughs> <laughs> less and less people walk their dogs past our house now <laughs> um our next comedian i am on instagram but i'm not that au fait with instagram and i didn't follow that many people to begin with and ashley was one of the people i followed to begin with first of all and i just so inspired because i absolutely adore anybody who when they go for a walk picks up litter that is not virtue signaling that is making the world a better place one piece of trash at the time i mean i've been picking up trash at clubs for a long time that's why i'm pretty celibate now <laughs> but even today i walked to my little village shop to get some veg and i picked a bit of rubbish up off the floor and i was like i must tell ashley <laughs> i'm holding a bit of rubbish oh i can't wait to meet this comedian i mean for goodness sake, Ashley's credits are amazing. She's appeared on the on the Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon, where she was chosen by uh, Jerry Seinfeld uh, to win the Seinfeld Challenge. She has performed in New York Underground Comedy Festival. She won the Blue City Comedy Comic of the My, My Month competition. That's much better than being a four leaf clover. <laughs> find her, find <laughs> my books. <laughs> but then again, which one's going to pay out more? <laughs> at the moment i think it's 50 50 <laughs> so with no further ado please put your hands together and pay attention to the comedic musings of ashley get him a Woo! oh thank you so much comedic musings i like it i feel like i need like oh we got a dog all right he's clapping he's good uh, <laughs> um i do collect trash every day i run four miles every day and i pick up trash uh while i run uh, because I'm trying to get into heaven. So, <laughs> there's no other reason for it, right? <laughs> I've done a lot of bad things, and now I've got to fix it. <laughs> uh, a lot of you talking about chicken run, which made me think, okay, we had chicken run, right? Chicken's escaping. 
uh, other 90s movies. We had Babe, a pig trying not to die. Yeah. Yeah. We had another 90s movie, Free Willy, trying to help, <laughs> a, you know, a Orca to escape. What was happening in the 90s? What, <laughs> what were these directors and writers thinking? I don't know. All good movies. Benji. Or what was there's a dolphin one, too. Let the animals be. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I'm so happy you guys are all here. Uh, uh, I just, you know, it's it's nice to see you all. It's lovely uh, to have somebody to spend a Friday night with. You know, it's, <laughs> it's nice. Uh, you're you're better than some of the audiences that I've had this week. I um I was doing a show the other day. All right, and there was this woman. Okay, and she looked at me. And then she looked at her friend and uh, you know what she said? I'll tell you what she said. Th this is what she said. She said, I can't believe that she's not a lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like you guys can't believe it either. Okay, great start. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> this is going well. All right. <laughs> You're not alone, though. You're, you're not alone. You know who thinks that, too? Uh, <laughs> can you guys hear that where it's like there's a there's a monster? It's it's the ghost of my future. There's a slow motion. There's a slow motion me. I guess I, if I stop talking, maybe you can find it. Maybe if I stop cracking wise about it. Oh, is it gone? <laughs> That's just me with it. It's me through. I'm a ventriloquist act. <laughs> what is that? That's the weirdest thing. That's I'm sorry it. to interrupt, but if you are playing a, any live feed in the background, can you please mute it for our comedians to complete their set, please? Thank you. Possibly Anne. I like it. I don't think that's on. No. Maybe woo, we get. I like how Lucy put on her um like her her stern voice. Then <laughs> it, was like, it was like if you are in the movie theater and you have your cell phone out, we will beat you to death. <laughs> Look at your face. <laughs> well, that's fine. I don't want to. I mean, uh, Kim, I love you. You and the person you're with, who I can only see his shoulder, but it's a beautiful shoulder. I want you guys to laugh, so don't feel bad. Even if there is an echo, even if there's some sort of monster involved, we will ask the monster to become involved, and it'll be fun. Okay. We'll we'll see. We'll see what's going on. <laughs> but people people think I'm gay. They they do. Lots of people do. Uh, you're not alone. I'll tell you who thinks that too. My friends. Oh, they're back. Look at that. But anytime I bring up being gay, I get the monster. They're like, you will not. What is happening? There we go. <laughs> my friends think it. My, my parents think it. And um, probably the worst time was uh, when I met my husband. That was, <laughs> that was a big one. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> you guys are lovely. <laughs> Um, my last name, uh, Lucy did a great job pronouncing it, but my last name is hard. Uh, my last name is actually Gutermuth. And uh, no, no, you were fine. You were fine. But a lot of people mispronounce it and they just they just wreck it. You know, they'll mispronounce it and they'll say gutter mouth. <laughs> oh, <laughs> mouth. Loretta was motor mouth <laughs> or motor mouth. That'd be good. Gutter mouth is a band. This is the strangest thing. I love it because I can have a 10 minute set and the voice will extend it to a 20 minute set. You don't even have to say. <laughs> I wonder what that is. So, so maybe it's a new Zoom feature. <laughs> it's not just me hearing it right um, because otherwise I look insane <laughs> because there's just there's this crazy voice that's talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it, Lucy did a great job. You pronounce my name fine, uh, uh, but a lot of people call me gutter mouth and it's really annoying. It makes me mad. It's like you can't even pronounce a simple word. Come on. One T, <laughs> you know, one T and a long U. Gutter mouth. Right? Not that hard. I don't know. I actually looked it up and it's German uh, and it means gutter mouth. 
That's great. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out I'm pronouncing it wrong. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so um i am married and my husband a man remember <laughs> i'll just let that sit with you for a minute make sure you're okay uh my husband is 20 years older than i am maybe i should let that sit with you too uh <laughs> 20 years what was I thinking? <laughs> he has sweatshirts older than me. He does. <laughs> He's got sweatshirts older than me. And he still wears them. He does. <laughs> and you can tell because they just say things like uh, blockbuster. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got one. He's got one that, what's it say? Oh, it says Zima. Remember Zima? <laughs> that was like the precursor to White Claw. Uh, Alka Pops in the 90s. What can you say? 20 years. When we got together, um, I was just looking for someone to buy me alcohol. <laughs> Some people thank their lucky stars for love. I thank Smirnoff. Just... <laughs> uh, my family tries to find the negative in my relationship, um, which is hard. You know, my dad said, when you are 50, your husband will be 70. I was like, yeah, that's just basic math, dad. That's <laughs> <laughs> well done. <laughs> my dad goes, you failed math. All right. OK, yeah, that's legit. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I'm just checking. My dad said, what are you going to do when he's old? You know, like old, old. And I said, well, I guess if you were to look at it mathematically, uh, since I already like older guys, I would find him 10% more attractive. <laughs> and he goes, no, it's 20%. See, you're bad at math. I was like, oh, okay, fine. That's, <laughs> that's on me. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I told my husband straight to his face. I said, I am hoping that you will still be in good shape. And he told me straight to my face that he's hoping that I lower my standards. And that's, that's marriage. That's hard. <laughs> People could be a little judgmental about me being married to an older man. Um, but guys, it wasn't like my goal. OK, I didn't set out to do it. I didn't have it on my vision board. It wasn't there. <laughs> what would that be like, though? Like my mom comes in and she's like, Ashley, what's on your vision board there? Is it just is it just an old man with with a cane bent over? What is that? What is that? What are you doing there? What's that trying to mean? And I'm like, Mom, that's my retirement plan. She's like, oh, OK. Yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> Oh, I never, you know, I never had a guidance counselor be like, Ashley, when you grow up, what do you want to do? He's from Jersey. What do you want to do? <laughs> I don't know. What do I want to do? What do I want to do? Remember An you? older man? Uh, <laughs> got any pamphlets on that? No. Get out of my office. All right. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> uh, my husband makes me mad sometimes. He does, uh, you know, just like just seeing red, you know, not knowing what to do with my hands, just like pacing up and down the hallway until my footsteps are just imprinted in like the beige carpet, you know. And then he would just not say anything for like hours. Hours. Ridiculous, right? And we have this old grandfather clock and it just ticks away, you know, for hours, just tick, talk, tick, tick. It's broken. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he wants, he doesn't say anything. And then he will come up to me. He'll come up to me slowly. Like he's about to stick his hand in the mouth of a hungry tiger. Just, you know, like, and he'll just be like, Hey, Still mad? 
Yes, 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 <laughs> yes. We didn't discuss anything. <laughs> Still mad. Then he goes, uh, oh, I thought if I didn't mention it, you'd forget about it. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Did you just use the F word in my house? I will not forget about anything. Forget. <laughs> So I told him, I said, I'm going to give you a blank notebook. Every time that technique works, you put a little check mark in there. And at the end of our relationship, you will have a blank notebook. That's not <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Drives me nuts. Drives me nuts. It's not often that my husband gets mad at me. Not because I'm perfect. Uh, he just doesn't want the hassle. <laughs> that's fair <laughs> you take, it sounds it sounds about right yeah you know i mean it's not a bad strategy i guess <laughs> my, <laughs> my my husband told me that i argue like an attorney that has just been given a bowl of free cocaine which <laughs> i guess <laughs> i guess that makes sense <laughs> uh he was upset with me the other day, though. He was upset, and uh, he's just like, Ashley, you make me explain everything too much. I said, give me three examples. And he couldn't, he couldn't do it. <laughs> Didn't have the examples. Didn't have them. I have, uh, I have short hair. I like to come out and say that because sometimes people think that I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a mirror. <laughs> Sometimes I'll see wives like elbowing their husbands and they'll be like, hey, Steve, Steve, do you, what has she done? What has she done to herself? She's got short hair. Go tell her. Go tell her. She'll appreciate it. I won't. I won't. I won't. <laughs> men, men tell me all the time that they aren't attracted to women with short hair. <laughs> Which is a nice introduction, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Steve. I don't want to have sex with you. Okay, why? <laughs> why am I still shaking your hand? Okay, thanks. <laughs> Seems used. I don't. <laughs> uh, women are different, though. Uh, a lot of women will come up to me, and they'll tell me that they wish they could have short hair, but that their husbands won't let them. Ooh. I know, won't let them. What? What? Oh, hey, let me check. Hang on. Oh, I forgot. It's 1890. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's right. That's fine. That's on brand. <laughs> What's he going to do? What is he going to do? Call his bluff. Is he going to glue it back on? <laughs> <laughs> Paste it on there. Bring it back. <laughs> Bring on the Elmers. Get out the glue stick. I knew one woman who was in her 40s. She had kids. She had kids. And she said that if she cut her hair, her dad would kill her. Her dad. Kill her. Metaphorically, I hope. <laughs> you know, I haven't seen her recently, though, now that I think about it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? The last time I saw her, she was headed to Supercuts. Oh, shoot. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a terrible place to die. <laughs> <laughs> my um, my hair makes people uh, make assumptions about me, uh, but I've just embraced it. You know, whatever. Well, when I go to get my hair cut, I'll say to the stylist, "Can you can you cut my hair in a way that makes people ask me if I'm in the Air Force?" <laughs> <laughs> She nailed it. She nailed it. <laughs> oh, I've, uh, like I've spe spent the last um, few months trying to figure myself out. And I realized I don't really cry. Um, and I know this isn't a popular opinion. Brace yourself. But I think of crying as a weakness. Ooh. Yeah, I know. Ooh, it's bad. I don't think it's the right thing to think. But I do. Deep down inside. I have the beliefs of a 70-year-old man. I don't, I don't know. 
<laughs> Maybe it's the way I was raised. I don't know. Minus the, you know, casual racism. I don't have that. Don't have that. <laughs> <laughs> Not only do I have the beliefs of an old man, I also have the taste buds. For breakfast today, I had grape nuts and an old cigar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can still taste it. Uh, yeah, sticks with you. Sticks with you. Uh, <laughs> crying does make me uncomfortable. I don't know. It's me. I know it's my fault. But what am I supposed to do? You know, what am I supposed to do to make it stop? I don't. I don't know. I. Uh, <laughs> they say people need to cry it out. I. I would like people to cry it outside. Just take it outside. <laughs> away from me i don't know <laughs> i know it's my problem and i pretty much know why my dad hates crying too on the rare occasion that i cried uh he would tell me to suck it up yeah it would have been nice to have more support as an infant <laughs> uh. you know all the parenting books they say support the head they don't say anything about the baby's emotions. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Suck it up. Oh, my God. Brings back memories. He used to say the same thing to my mom, but for different reasons. Um, <laughs> uh, he, um, you know, he, he bought some pepper spray once. My dad's crazy. He bought some pepper spray once, and he went to spray it into the air to test it. Makes sense, right? Got to test it. <laughs> make sure it works. Straight white guy needs pepper spray. Needs to make sure he's protected. Uh, so he, he bought some pepper spray once. And he he take, sprays it in the air to test it. And he had the nozzle turned the wrong way. <gasps> I don't know why he held it for so long. <laughs> Just spray it. Just had tears, you know, rolling down his face, and he's just, he's just so, he just screaming, he's so upset, obviously. And I just went up to him and I was like, Dad, 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 suck it up. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh my God, my dad would have been a terrible doctor. You know, you're having trouble walking. That's just your body telling you that you're lame. Suck uh. it up. <laughs> <laughs> your throat hurts oh that's just your body telling you to shut up <laughs> that is right there. <laughs> oh you have erectile dysfunction actually that's a very serious problem uh that's near and dear to my heart you know <laughs> <laughs> made me cry once just wouldn't work no matter how many times i said suck it up couldn't get it to work <laughs> I don't know. I guess what the deeper issue for me is I don't like to be seen as weak. You know, um, I've spent my life trying to be physically strong, just really working at it. You know, Lucy had mentioned the running and I pick up the trash and I, I just spent a lot of time trying to be physically strong. And if you go onto like fitness message boards, you'll see a lot of men writing that women can't have a strong upper body, which, you know, I, I don't, I'm not going to mention any names, but Planet Fitness Phil 69 writes, <laughs> I would never date a woman stronger than me. I'm not turned on by dudes. They're not turned on by you either, Phil. So you're fine. You're good. You're good. Mm -hmm. I couldn't have sex with a woman with more muscles than me. Well, Phil, you're right about that. You nailed that because it would be harder for you if they could escape. And I think oh. that's, <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> I have a strong upper body. I do. I can, I, I can do push-ups. I can do pull-ups. I can lift heavy things. You know what that does for me? It means that more people ask me to help them move. That's it. That's all it does. <laughs> and it means that in every job I've ever had, uh, I've challenged coworkers to feats of strength. Uh, <laughs> obviously, I'm just trying to feel like powerful in a place where I don't have any control. You know, um, I, I'll, I'll just walk into the break room and just be like, "You, me, arm wrestling competition now. The winner gets to be the manager at this Applebee's." <laughs> And they're like, I'm already the manager and I need you to talk to HR. 
Uh, this is, <laughs> is not okay. <laughs> I think, I think I might be difficult to live with. Um, I say think, but even my dog tried to move out. Uh, <laughs> packed his little bags. He's like, I can't put up with this lady. <laughs> what is the deal? <laughs> I, I'm really organized and clean. Um, it's not that big of a deal, though. You know, like if the house isn't clean for two days, a few days, it's not that big of a deal. But I will burn down the house. Not, not that big of a deal. I have OCD. I have OCD, not diagnosed, but I've checked 48 times. Um, <laughs> today. I, in fact, I can't even stay that long after the show because I got to go check again. It's, it's a problem. I like my house to be very clean. I'm not, not like crazy about it, though. You know, I only vacuum my fridge weekly. That's... <laughs> Fridge. It's not like I'm walking in it. It's fine. I uh, <laughs> I remember when Marie Kondo came out with that book, you know, about organizing and decluttering. But she made a book. She she made something I had to bring into my house. She she made clutter, guys. She <laughs> oh, I can't deal with that. I bought it on Kindle, you know, because I'll only have electronic clutter. You know, if you find yourself with a cluttered Kindle. You only have one thing to toss, and that's fine. You just throw that out. <laughs> with, uh, with Condo, we're on last name terms. She calls me Goodermouth or Guttermouth. <laughs> depends on how she feels. Uh, <laughs> you're supposed to get rid of it if it doesn't spark joy. Okay, for God's sake, whatever, fine. Uh, I get rid of things if they don't spark whimsy. That's for me. You know, I've got some fake flowers that my husband gave me. I'm trying to write a joke, right? Well, uh, okay, I've... tell me. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's my ventriloquist act again. <laughs> I'm starting to write a joke. Well, now's a great time. <laughs> I think that's awesome. <laughs> my hus- so my husband, he gave me fake flowers, right? He gave me fake, fake roses uh, because he thought they were real flowers. Ordered them on... Uh, uh, like Amazon, right? And I watered them for months before I realized they weren't real. You know, that's, we're not that bright, but that's whimsy. That's whimsy, guys. <laughs> I will keep those forever. Uh, if I haven't used something in three months, I get rid of it. And that's why I don't have a fire extinguisher. I'm, uh, I'm currently on the cusp of throwing out a mortar and pestle. You know those things that you grind spices with? Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, think about throwing that away because nobody uses those. It's not 1492. What is that? We, we don't have to cross the ocean to steal pepper anymore. We don't have to do it. <laughs> Just buy spices. I don't have to grind my own coriander. Oh, I don't know. Pepper used to be worth more than gold. It really did. That's insane. Can you imagine if one of those explorers came back now and he was just like, what would they think? They would just be like, oh, my God, you have pepper crusted prime rib. What? Are you kings? What is this? <laughs> they throw the prime rib away. They lick the pepper. What, what is this? Yeah, well, I don't know. Some, I got a bunch of I got a bunch of pepper packets just in a drawer, little white pepper packets. Sometimes I just throw them away. Screw you, Christopher Columbus. Take that. That's, <laughs> I don't know. I, uh, <laughs> so my husband is older than I am. And, um, you know, we, we, we have a stepson. And uh, my husband just calls him son. That's, <laughs> and I'm, a, I'm a super safe driver when my stepson's in the car. I take it seriously. I even have one of those baby on board stickers. Uh, he peels it off when he drives. <laughs> People ask me all the time about having my own kids. Um, I don't want my own kids. They can all stay with their foster families. That's. <laughs> uh, my stepson. My stepson said to me, "When do you think?" I'll find someone to love like you love my dad. Oh, my God. That's so sweet. Isn't that so sweet? It's so sweet. 
I said, buddy, don't worry. Oh, my God, you'll find someone. You know, you're 17. It's, it's going to take time. You know, it's, it might take several years. But if you're anything like your dad, she hasn't been born yet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> my name is Ashley Guterman. Thank you so much for sticking around. You've been wonderful. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> that was brilliant. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ashley Goodermuth. <laughs> and I made a point of making sure I didn't mess up anyone's first names. <laughs> it's it's one or other. Um, but I want to thank everybody for um, coming and uh, being the audience because you know comedians we can perform to an empty room doesn't mean we want to <laughs> and um it, honestly it really means the world of you that be there just come join in and watch um online etc um but what we would really love is not just adoration it's cash so if you would like to donate to the night to support the comedians and um, our aspirations of one day doing this in front of real people again, um, please, please, please put some money through either paypal.me forward slash BD comedy, and that's BD for button down. And then you can also use the cash app, which is at, uh, which is the dollar sign button down comedy. We haven't got that over here, so it's all crazy talk to me. Um, but this time next week, we've got, I'm sorry, on the February the 19th, we've got an amazing lineup coming to um, Button Down Comedy for the Quarantine King Comedy Show, which is going to be, we've got headliner, we've got Jen Snyder, feature one of my closest friends in comedy, Spider Jones, and opener Jessica Misra. Uh, didn't get any of their names wrong and they're not even here. Um, but thank you so, so much. If you like this show, please do go back on Facebook and share this video with everyone else so they can see us. We're not a dirty secret. You can tell everyone about us. And a big thank you, of course, to the person that put this together, George Wagner, who is the king of button down comedy, um, mainly because I think he just likes button down shirts. <laughs> and he's trying to get it to catch on <laughs> but thank you so so much everyone big hand of applause to Juliana Heng, Alani Cooper and Ashley Goodermuth and of course George Wagner and you guys for watching and being part of it thank you very much good night <laughs>